As the southeast uh, here in the United States cleans up from Hurricane Helene, the impacts of the catastrophic, catastrophic storm are being felt out there on the campaign trail as well. Our correspondents are tracking the race for the White House from every angle. First, let's go to CNN's Eva McKen. She's covering the Harris campaign for us. Eva, how is the vice president, first of all, responding to this crisis? Wolf, we know that she's receiving regular briefings. The vice president gave brief remarks today at FEMA headquarters, where she described the destruction as heartbreaking. She acknowledged the loss of life, the loss of homes, those without power, and pledged the full support of the federal government. Let's listen. We will do everything in our power to help communities respond and recover. I plan to be on the ground as soon as possible, but as soon as possible without disrupting any emergency response operations because that must be the highest priority. To everyone who has been impacted by this storm and to all of those of you who are rightly feeling overwhelmed by the destruction and the loss, our nation is with you. And this comes at a time when the campaign has had to pivot. She was planning to stay longer on the West Coast for more campaign events, but she came back to Washington early to be able to address the impact of this weather event. We know that she's been in conversation with many of the governors, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, and Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. And she did reiterate her plans, as you heard, to visit the impacted areas as soon as possible. But the key is she doesn't want to disrupt emergency response operations. And then lastly, Wolf, she also spoke about the importance of rising to the moment of this crisis. I took that to mean that she wants to keep politics out of this. So good afternoon. To good, important point indeed. Eva McKen, thank you very much. I want to go to CNN's Kristen Holmes right now. She's got more on Donald Trump's stop at a hard-hit city in Georgia today. Kristen, Trump went after President Biden while he was there. That's right. His campaign saying that this wasn't a political trip, but Donald Trump has been making this storm and the aftermath incredibly political. For days, he has been blaming Kamala Harris, blaming Joe Biden, saying that he's the one going to the ground while they are not. Of course, I do want to point out what Eva just said there, talking about those resources. This is a common occurrence for sitting presidents and even sitting vice presidents. They often wait to go into a disaster zone, so none of those resources will be diverted to them that should be going to help with search and rescue or rebuilding. But again, Donald Trump making this very political. At one point, he even on Truth Social tried to say, and we still have no evidence of this, that the federal government was not helping Republicans or Republican areas. He said that the federal government, particularly the Biden administration, was leaving people to drown. And then today, during his remarks, he seemed to imply that Governor Kemp, the Republican governor in Georgia, was having a hard time getting in touch with Joe Biden, something the governor himself seemed to dispel. Here, take a listen to what Donald Trump said and then what Kemp said about his relationship or his conversations with Joe Biden. The governor's doing a very good job. He's having a hard time getting the president on the phone. I guess uh, they're, not, they're not being responsive. The federal government is not being responsive. The president just called me uh, yesterday afternoon. I missed him and called him right back. And he just said, hey, what do you need? And I told him, you know, we, we got what we need. We'll work through the federal process. He, he offered that if there's other things we need, just to call him directly, which I appreciate that. And of course, as we've been reporting, President Biden has now said he will be traveling to North Carolina. Donald Trump is expected to be in North Carolina on Friday. Unclear if he's going to be doing anything regarding the damage and what we have seen on the ground there. Wolf. All right, Kristen Holmes and Eva McKen, to both of you, thank you very much. Uh, meanwhile, Donald Trump is lobbying personal insults at Kamala Harris and calling into question her mental fitness. Listen to this. Joe Biden became mentally impaired. Kamala was born that way. <laughs> Crooked Joe Biden became mentally impaired, sad. But lying Kamala Harris... Honestly, I believe she was born that way. <laughs> There's something wrong with Kamala. And I just don't know what it is, but there is definitely something missing. All right, let's discuss what's going on. Democratic strategist James Carville is joining us. James, thanks so much for joining us. What do you make, first of all, of these rather disparaging comments from the former president? Well, maybe I'll go to Western North Carolina and bring some paper towels and throw them at people, if, if you remember his response to the Puerto Rico hurricane. And, and all of this is so classless and so expected. 
it, it doesn't even, I used to get mad at this kind of stuff. I, I no longer get mad. It, it, what else can he say? It's contradicted by the Republican governor uh, of Georgia. It, 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 this is just expected. I mean, I think the guy's really diminished. And by the way, if the vice president was born that way, why did she beat him 100 to nothing in a debate? He, he can't be very smart if she was born impaired and wiped the floor with him <laughs> at, at the ABC debate. So I, yeah. I, I think at some point we're just going to have to start taking these pitches and letting them go by because I don't think they're particularly effective. In, in our CNN poll of polls, the latest one, uh, Kamala Harris has a slight lead over Trump, 50 to 47 percent, but she lags behind Biden's performance with many key parts of the 2020 Democratic coalition. So how big of a problem potentially is this for Kamala Harris? Well, I would rather answer it this way. It's a big opportunity because she has some, some, some upward movement to get as people get to know her better. Uh, people know President Biden very well. They form very definitive judgments about him. And I think the vice president is, is still a work in progress. And, but the good news, she's got five weeks to go to, to do that. So I, I actually kind of find this mildly encouraging. If she's three points ahead and she's still pretty unknown, that tells me that there's room to grow here. But is five weeks uh, too short a time? Boy, so it's the time you got. <laughs> Whether it's too short or too long, the one thing, we're going to go to post, uh, I guess it's November 5th, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in, in November. And, and, you know, Harold Wilson and Harold McMillan, and one of the British Harold said in politics, a, a week is a year. So I guess maybe we, we got five years, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Time. You know, the uh, vice presidential candidates, Governor Tim Walz and Senator J.D. Vance, will have their big debate tomorrow night. Given that Trump and Harris will only have one debate, at least so far, does that raise the stakes for this contest tomorrow night? Oh, maybe slightly. And by the way, I would point out, as we all know, as Vice President Harris wants to have another debate. It's, it's Trump who's chickening out. He's scared of her. And I think he feels superior if he's behind a microphone and he can't be questioned or, or, or attacked by, by Vice President Harris. He's not, he's not a very manly candidate, I don't think. But, you know, I'll be watching tomorrow night. I think it'll be interesting. Uh, generally, if history's any guide, it won't be determined very much. But I think Governor Walsh will do just fine. I have every confidence he'll be fine.